Hello. Welcome to Film Focus Recaps. In the near future, a deadly virus strikes humanity and quickly causes the collapse of civilization. The continents are nothing but chaos, violence, and cannibalism, but the virus doesn't spread offshore. In Germany the only safe space is Helgoland, an island sealed off from the outside world. 513 people live there, and to keep up with resources, whenever someone new is born a resident must be sacrificed. The island is ruled by brutal laws and anyone who breaks them ends up at the bottom of a leaderboard. A mock vote decides who has to die and who still gets a chance to prove themselves. Fifteen years have passed since the initial virus outbreak. In Helgoland, Amelie is giving birth to her baby while reporter Lola records the whole process. The baby is born well and healthy and gets a blessing from her grandfather, who then leaves the clinic to approach the cliff. It turns out he volunteered to self-delete so his granddaughter could have his spot on the island. The man says goodbye to the family before meeting his death. Unaware that back in the clinic, Dr. Mark discovers it isn't over, Amelie is having twins, and soon a second baby is born. They never suspected this because they lack hospital equipment. Afterward the council discusses what to do regarding the second baby. Some of them think they shouldn't kill anyone and allow the island to reach 514 people, but others point out that if they make an exception now then everyone will ask for one in the future. In the end Beatrice announces they'll let the people vote on the matter. The newscast covers the story and reminds people of the leaderboard. On 511th place is Christian, who freaks when he sees his name on the screen. He says that if he gets chosen he won't jump, but his friend Hendrik reminds him that the last person who tried that was pushed by force in a cage. The 512th place is Elise, an old lady who is seen as a waste because she can't contribute much in her old age. The last place is Etienne, who is seen as a criminal although he swears he's just a hard worker. The next day, Marek and his son Linus go to the lab to continue working on a vaccine. However Marek is frustrated because they're lacking resources and fresh samples, so he thinks they won't be making any progress like this. Afterward Judith picks up Marek so they can deliver medicine in town. First they visit Etienne, whose wife Lisa blames Judith for his last place on the board. Judith reminds her that Etienne stole medicine, but Lisa points out he had to do that because the doctors wouldn't give it to him. He had only wanted to help his sick wife, yet he was punished with no food for four weeks. The argument is interrupted when a neighbor comes by to get Lisa's grandfather's clock, making Marek realize that the couple has been buying votes. Lisa begs him to talk to Beatrice and Marek promises to do what he can. Meanwhile Amelie suddenly wakes up from her nap when she hears a noise and discovers Elise in the room with a baby in her arms. Amelia immediately takes the child back and accuses Elise of wanting to kill the baby to save herself, but Elise swears she wouldn't hurt a child and just found the baby on the stairs so she tried to help. Back to Marek, he visits Laura to bring her some medicine in secret. However Judith has been watching him and later tells Beatrice about it at the supermarket. To Judith's surprise, Beatrice asks her to keep the secret for now because they need Marek and his knowledge, but she hopes Judith may replace him one day. At that moment a kid accidentally breaks a jar of pickles, and Hendrik tells Christian this is the perfect moment to look good in front of the crowd. Christian approaches the child and gives him an apple while saying it wasn't his fault, then another woman also gives the kid a little gift. Beatrice then announces they both get a point for sharing their food. Nearby, Hendrik finds Etienne and Lisa and mentions he'll be working at the storage today, so he offers to illegally get some food for them. Lisa calls him disgusting and tries to push him away, but Henrik immediately stops her and threatens to be less nice next time. Afterward Henrik drops the tomato he had been eaten and leaves, so Etienne picks up the tomato and eats it to Lisa's disgust. The whole encounter is noticed by Beatrice, who follows Henrik out and scolds him for his behavior, saying she can't protect him forever. It turns out Henrik is her son, and he refuses to behave unless Beatrice gets him a position of power. Later Marek returns to the lab and after suiting up, he reveals a locked door at the back where he's keeping Peter, a sick patient from the mainland who is being used as a lab rat. The deal says that if the experimentation goes well, he can live on the island once he's cured. While Marek gives him an injection, Peter mentions he's been feeling better, so he thinks the medicine may be working. Meanwhile Lisa meets with Hendrik in secret to accept his food offer, which she must pay with her body. However the moment is interrupted when an alert comes in saying mainlanders are trying to reach the island. Since Hendrik couldn't finish, he gives Lisa just a can and then runs to meet with the other guards at the shore. They can see a raft coming, so they tell them to go back or they'll open fire. The group doesn't obey and a guard shoots, killing a mainlander. The rest of the group gets scared and tries to go away, but Hendrik keeps on shooting to kill them all, for which he gets scolded by squad leader Mia. A few hours later, everyone gathers to do the voting. First the points are adjusted and now Christian isn't at the bottom three anymore. The citizens vote to keep the second baby, and among the three candidates, Etienne gets the most votes to be killed. At that moment Lisa says she votes for Hendrik because he's an abuser, and soon more women stand up to back up her story. Hendrik points out it was all consensual, but the women say his MO is to exchange food for pleasure and he was just taking advantage of desperate people. The locals immediately begin supporting the women so Beatrice has no choice but to admit Hendrik committed coercion and theft, so she lets the group vote again. 
Every single person votes to kill Hendrik, however Beatrice says a mother can't kill her own son and Hendrik will be kicked out instead. All the locals protest yet they're ignored and Hendrik is taken to jail. Lola records the whole thing but when she edits the video, she cuts out the people's protests. In the meantime Marek goes back to the lab and discovers Peter isn't doing well, so he gives him a new injection as he promises it'll help. Moments later Peter is dead and Marek incinerates the body. The next morning, Linus informs Marek that he's joining Mia's expedition group to the mainland to get updates on the world. Marek tries to forbid him from doing it, but Linus ignores his concerns. Sometime later, the locals go to say goodbye to the expedition group, who are also taking Hendrik with them. On his way to the boat, Hendrik headbutts at Ian and has to be dragged away. During the trip, the group shares stories about the mainland, imagining it as a zombie apocalypse. Eventually they reach a harbor and Hendrik is pushed out of the boat. Desperate, he tries to give a speech to make them feel sorry for him, but Heinz starts beating him up because some women in his family were his victims. Hendrik offers bribes if they take him back, so Heinz shoots at the ground to make him run away. Then Mia has to stop Heinz from shooting again. Back on the island, Beatrice is called to the water supply building because there are issues with the filtration, which is about to reach total shutoff. As the employees search for the problem, a woman finds a radio and shows it to Beatrice, who is surprised because radios are illegal on the island. Moments later Chief Engineer Ulike announces he solved the problem and Beatrice congratulates him for his hard work, but when he asks to bring his wife to the island because she isn't infected, Beatrice refuses. Back to the expedition group, they sail through a river to take a look at the city and find it in an awful state. The soldiers leave to search for samples, but Linus is told to stay in the boat. At a bridge, Mia and the soldiers meet with the Earl, whom they've been doing business for a while. They're suddenly interrupted by a desperate man asking to be taken to the island, but Earl's people shoot him down. Mia gives Earl fresh food and in return, Earl gives them medicine and two huge boxes. Meanwhile Linus gets tired of waiting and searches the area, only to find a bunch of survivors who tell him the virus is gone. Linus doesn't believe them and keeps his gun up, so the survivors make fun of him and leave. Suddenly Linus is approached by Mojik, who gives Linus a bottle of medicine and says there's a lot more on an abandoned ship lab he found. Linus agrees to follow him and they enter the ship, where Linus shows him a box full of medicine. He says there's more of it and proper equipment in the actual lab and asks for asylum for him and his friends in return. Linus tries to explain he can't give them that, only to suddenly find himself surrounded by survivors. Scared, he runs away. In the meantime, Mia's group is going back to the boat, and suddenly a survivor jumps on Heinz to remove his mask. The soldiers immediately shoot the guy and get on the boat, where they discover Linus is gone. However they claim they can't waste time and leave without him. At that moment Linus comes out of the ship and sees the group leaving, so he starts running after them. A local tries to stop him, but Linus quickly knocks him down and keeps running. Then he climbs on a higher surface and jumps toward the river, landing on the boat just in time. To his surprise, Mojik lands right behind him, and Mia immediately shoots him. Then the soldiers notice Linus has a tear in his suit so they shoot him with a tranquilizer to put him to sleep. Moments later at the island, Linus wakes up and hides the medicine bottle in his fist while he's taken to the cells and given a good wash. When Marek finally comes to see him, Linus gives him the medicine and tells him about the lab. Then Marek gives his son an injection just in case. Soon Heinz is also brought to a cell and he won't stop coughing, so Marek checks his body and finds a rash on his skin. Afterward Marek tests the medicine Linus brought and confirms it's real. He asks Beatrice to send another team to the mainland, but Beatrice refuses because having two people in quarantine has already been enough trouble. Before leaving, she tells Marek to give Heinz fake medicine and Marek is devastated to do so. On the mainland, Earl's men retrieve Mojik's body from the water and find medicine in his pocket, so Earl sends them to find Mojik's friends. Nearby Hendrik finally makes it to the city and sees how a survivor gives Wilma a watch in exchange for being disinfected. Hendrik tries to do the same but only has a keychain to offer, so Wilma threatens him into staying back. To prove he doesn't have a rash, Hendrik removes his clothes and uses the chance to seduce her. Wilma falls for it and dances with Hendrik while listening to her boombox. However when Hendrik asks for a sip of her water bottle, Wilma slaps him for it. Then she gives him new clothes and takes him around the area to show him her cleaning routine in the theater where she lives, mentioning that her last assistant accidentally caught on flames because of the rubbing alcohol. She keeps mentioning Earl, but whenever Hendrik tries asking about him, she shuts him up. Later when Wilma checks on her stash of treasures, Hendrik surprises her from behind and beats her up to death. Meanwhile Beatrice talks to Lisa and compliments how brave she was when she stood up against Hendrik, resulting in manipulating Lisa into becoming her eyes and ears around the island with the promise of a good life for her and her husband. The next time Beatrice appears on TV, Lisa shows approval of Hendrik's punishment having been an exception. At the lab, Marek convinces Judith to help him with the research since he works slowly without Linus. When they check the boxes Earl sent, Judith is disgusted to find two people in them, but Marek isn't surprised since it's part of the deal with Earl. Both people are kept as lab rats in secret cells and given injections to test Marek's vaccine trials. 
Unfortunately Heinz dies before they can find a cure to help him. In the other cell, Linus hides the fact he has a rash too. During a town meeting, Beatrice shares the news about Heinz and blames Mia for it, calling her an irresponsible leader. Mia protests, but Beatrice ignores her and wants to vote to make Mia lose 100 points. Suddenly Lola's daughter Fiona starts coughing and her friends copy her, causing everyone to run away. Beatrice stays and announces Mia is losing her points, so her name goes down on the leaderboard. Afterward the council votes in favor of holding parents responsible for their children's actions. The next morning Fiona throws up, and Lola realizes she may be pregnant. She takes her to see Lore, who has a testing machine that confirms the pregnancy. Lola wants Fiona to let Lore remove the fetus because it's an illegal pregnancy, but Fiona refuses and runs off. Then Lore informs Lola there's a tea she can use to force the loss of the baby. When she returns home, Lola pretends she just wants to comfort Fiona and gives her the tea. After Lola leaves the room, Fiona's boyfriend Tom comes out of hiding and promises he'll refuse to join the squad to take care of his new family instead. The next day at the lab, the mainland patients are getting worse. Marek says they need to work faster on a cure because they don't have time, but when Judith asks what it means, he refuses to explain. Then Judith gives another injection to a patient, who explains her brother sold her to Earl in exchange for food. Meanwhile Marek checks on Linus, who has been feeling weird temperature changes and having weird dreams. He finally reveals his rash, only for Marek to confess he's known since Linus came back, explaining why he's in such a hurry. Linus convinces Marek to use him as a lab rat too because he wants to be useful before dying. On the mainland, Earl confronts Mojik's gang, showing them the body and telling them the islanders did it. Earl promises better living conditions and food for the whole group if they tell him where the ship is, but Spark is suspicious of Earl and tells him Mojik lied. After sending the other kids to have some food, Earl talks to Spark in private and convinces him they can make a deal. Spark knows Earl wants to reach the island, so he asks for protection and to be taken to the island too. Earl agrees and gives him his word. Back in the lab, Marek gives Linus the injection before leaving. On his way out, he finds Mia in jail preparing weapons, which is her punishment. Marek decides to offer her a deal, he'll let her out if she sneaks to the mainland to find the ship with medicine that Linus mentioned. However Mia doesn't want any more trouble and tells him to talk to Beatrice first. Meanwhile Hendrik begins wandering with Wilma's card and when he sees a young woman, he gives her some batteries in exchange for information. At that moment three men appear behind him and knock him out with a taser. When Hendrik wakes up, he's hanging upside down and his clothes are missing. It turns out the woman is part of the gang that captured Hendrik and now they want to eat him, but when Hendrik says he works for Earl, they hesitate. They don't really believe him but they can't take the risk either, so they take Hendrik to see Earl. Hendrik introduces himself as Beatrice's son and pretends he was kidnapped during the squad's last visit, making it seem like he was accidentally left behind and that Beatrice will pay well for him. He also says that Wilma died of the virus and that her last wish was for him to bring all her things to Earl. Pleased by this information, Earl pays the gang with some medicine and keeps Hendrik. Later after checking on his rabbit meat factory, Earl checks on a chained up Hendrik to inform him his tests confirm he isn't infected. However he's also brought information, he knows Beatrice kicked Hendrik out and that Wilma was killed. Desperate, Hendrik offers information about the island's defense ring and its weakness, so Earl decides to let him live. The next day, the island opens interviews on the mainland to take one more person because there's an open spot after Heinz's death. Yulike's wife Kaiso attends and after a test confirms she isn't infected, she gets interviewed through a screen. Since she says she has pharmaceutical training, Marek asks her some questions to check her knowledge. Kaiso answers everything correctly and passes to the final round. In the meantime Etienne gets a new job at the island's last windmill, thanks to Lisa's new friendship with Beatrice. While taking care of the tools, he finds a bottle of alcohol. Etienne gives the bottle to his boss Joachim, who takes it and sends Etienne home. Later in the afternoon, Beatrice gathers the locals and presents the two best candidates for a new citizen. One is Kaiso and the other is a surgeon named Daniela, who offers a grand speech about her experience in the post-virus world. Both women answer Marek's questions very well, but when it's time to vote, Daniela easily wins because they find a surgeon to be more useful. Yulik is heartbroken to hear this and yells about the promises the council made before announcing he'll go back to the mainland to be with his wife. However Beatrice forbids it because he's the only one that knows how to handle the water supply system. Soon Daniela arrives at the island, and the locals don't see that two gang members are hidden in the boat. That night, Daniela sees Yulik spying on her and tells him off. Meanwhile Joachim tries to hide the bottle, but he can feel the alcohol calling for him and ends up getting drunk. In the morning, Yulik starts climbing the windmill to cause some damage to its engine. Joachim sees him on the security cameras, but as soon as he stands up to go after him, he collapses because of his hangover. Eventually he manages to stand up again and tries to climb the windmill too, only to slip and break his leg, leaving him hanging on a step. Soon an ambulance picks him up and takes him to Marek and Judith. They have no choice but to cut the leg off, and by the time Daniela arrives, she's so horrified by the view that she runs away. After the operation is over, Marek confronts Daniela, 
who admits she isn't a surgeon and just memorized the book Marek uses to answer his questions. She promises she's there to help Marek and Linus, saying Beatrice's days are numbered. At that moment Judith enters the room because she heard everything. She also reveals she knows Linus is infected and that Marek has been using more resources with him than usual, which is against the rules. Daniela suddenly attacks her and starts beating her up, grabbing a fire extinguisher to kill her with a blow to the head. She asks Marek to keep the secret because she'll bring enough resources for Marek to finally find the cure and save his son. Afterward they throw Judith's body into the ocean. The next day, Beatrice tries to manipulate Fiona into becoming her daughter, but Fiona tells her off. Then Beatrice reveals Tom is in jail for not wanting to join the squad and makes a lot of threats toward him and Fiona's friends, yet Fiona still doesn't surrender. She thinks the so-called nice community Beatrice is built as a scam and doesn't care if she's sent to the bottom of the leaderboard. In the evening, Tom's parents visit him in jail and notice he's injured, but Tom swears he fell. At that moment Ulike is brought in as well and he also has injuries, proving that the guards are being too violent to their prisoners. At the lab, Linus collapses and Marek spends lots of resources treating him until Linus awakes again. The next morning, Fiona is on her way to work when she suddenly passes out in the middle of the road. She wakes up in her bed and Marek checks on her, confirming she had a miscarriage. Lola asks Marek to keep the secret from Beatrice, mentioning patient confidentiality. Meanwhile Beatrice is worried about Judith and checks on Joachim to ask him about the operation, but he says he was out and doesn't remember anything. After explaining it Ian fixed the windmill, Beatrice looks around the clinic and finds a tooth stuck on the wall. She immediately goes to see Marek and accuses him of killing Judith, but Marek just laughs because he knows Beatrice needs him and can't kick him out. Then Beatrice says she'll make it look like you like killed Judith, leaving Marek feeling guilty. During another town meeting, Beatrice tells everyone that you like killed Judith, and Lisa helps her with some fake evidence. Everyone votes to punish you like except for Fiona's group, Marek, and Tom's parents. After the meeting, Joachim visits Lisa and Etienne, who has become the person in charge of the windmill because Joachim can't work anymore. Joachim points out many people know he used to be an addict and that Lisa has access to Beatrice's supplies, implying she set him up so her husband could get a promotion. The couple denies it and Joachim breaks down, so Lisa offers him to work as her domestic worker so he can still feel useful. Sometime later, the locals gather at the beach to watch how Ulike is tied up with some heavy metal and left near the water for the waves to slowly kill him. Feeling very guilty, Marek decides to go to the lab and tell Linus all his secrets. The day the apocalypse took over the world, Marek was returning to his home on the island with the younger Linus while his wife Tessa was still at the hospital taking samples from infected dead people. Before he was allowed to pass, he had to prove he lived there and that he wasn't infected. Afterward Marek sneaked inside a grocery store to get some supplies and met Beatrice, who was a shelf filler back then and let him leave with some food without paying. When Marek made it to the island, he talked to Nurse Lore and they worked together to start a testing station. Meanwhile Beatrice gave the other employees a big speech and they teamed up to take control of the store. The employees painted the windows and when clients came, they didn't let them pass. Instead they announced a new system in which the clients gave them the lists and the employees would bring out their orders. Some people got angry because they were only allowed to take low quantities to avoid hoarding, so Beatrice pretended the employees were armed to force them to cooperate. In the evening when the boss left the store, the angry clients took him hostage. Beatrice immediately locked the door and asked the employees to vote on what to do. They decided not to open the doors, and the boss got killed. Then Beatrice opened the doors so her team could threaten to shoot the clients, who dropped the weapons and ran away in fear. The team gathered the weapons and Beatrice sent them after the clients while little Hendrik watched from inside the store. The next day, Beatrice contacted the island's police chief and told him she had organized her own militia by manipulating young people into protecting their home. She thought they should make a plan to secure the island and save it from the catastrophe that was taking over the world. At first the cop refused, but Beatrice changed his mind when she showed him the client she had tied up in the trunk of her car. Soon Beatrice took control of the island's pharmacy by keeping it in her store too, and Lola started filming her to show how much good she was doing for the community. When Marek discovered this, he threatened to tell the authorities because someone without proper knowledge shouldn't be in charge of medicine, but Beatrice told him she was the authorities. To shut him up, Beatrice let Marek take the medicine he needed for his tests. Sometime later the mayor gathered all the island citizens and accused Beatrice and her group of vigilantism. Beatrice immediately began a manipulative speech, telling everyone how the store boss got killed and how she had a black market to keep the store stocked because the mayor was failing at his job. She even brought out the captured client as proof. Marek tried to protest, but the police chief backed up Beatrice's story and soon the locals were beating up the client to show their support of Beatrice's policies. Marek ran to the guy to try to help him, but he was pulled back and the cops took the man to the ocean. With another speech, Beatrice convinced everyone to let the guy drown. In the evening Marek called Tessa, who was making some progress with the understanding of the virus. At that moment a bunch of angry people broke into the hospital and started killing all the workers. When they surrounded Tessa, she threatened to break a test tube with the virus, but they didn't believe her and started beating her up while destroying her lap. 
Marek had to watch on the screen how Tessa was murdered without mercy. Meanwhile Beatrice went to talk to Laura about keeping the population manageable for the sake of supplies. At that moment she saw 513 on a calendar ad and told Laura 513 was the perfect number to keep the DNA on the island from being the same, claiming it was a calculation made by the local scientist. Laura was horrified because that would mean getting rid of half the island's citizens, so Beatrice threatened to kick her off if she didn't cooperate. But if Laura did help her, Beatrice would secretly give her all the medicine she needed for her diabetes. Laura had no choice but to agree. Sometime later, the tides dropped some infected bodies on the island, which were thrown out of the mainland. Laura and Beatrice took a sample of their blood and then visited a citizen to inject him with the infected blood while claiming it was protection against the virus. Later the guy felt very sick and ran out of the house, only to drop dead in front of a bunch of people who took this as more proof of Beatrice's stories. Afterward Marek started to test everyone on the island while Lola recorded everything as part of Beatrice's propaganda campaign. Marek and Laura tested all the blood and everyone came out clean, however Beatrice marked half the island as infected. At first Marek refused to be part of it, but Beatrice reminded him of Tessa and pointed out they had to stop the same from happening on the island. Marek gave in when Beatrice promised to give him the resources to develop a vaccine, guilting him into thinking about his son. Afterward Marek visited every fake infected person with the guards and forced them to leave the island on the ferry until only 513 people were left. Some people tried to protest, only to get shot in the process. Watching with horror, Marek swore to find the vaccine and bring Beatrice to justice after the pandemic was over. In the present, Linus tells Marek that what he did was selfish but he still loves him. Then Linus dies and Marek is so devastated that he finally snaps. He takes the security tape with his confession intending to show the whole island the truth, and when Lore comes to take it from him, Fiona grabs it first because she approves of the idea. At that moment Daniela shows up with a gun and forces Fiona to give her the tape, then she shoots it to destroy the evidence and announces the Earl is coming, so things are about to change. On the mainland, Spark tells Earl the location of the ship with the lab and they bring it out to start with their plan. Meanwhile on the island, the gang members kill one of the councilmen, 